I am Dr. Rajshekar Chakravarti. I am a nephrologist and director of nephrology services, Star Hospitals, Hyderabad. So, dialysis is a procedure wherein the patient's blood can be clean or the impurities in the blood can be removed and the patient can live a normal life even when he is having or she is having renal failure or kidney failure. So there are two types of dialysis. When a patient has advanced kidney disease, the patient has many toxins in the body. We call them as uremic toxins which are not removed because the kidney is not functioning. Till date we know there are more than 279 such toxins known as uremic toxins which accumulate in the body. Because of these toxins accumulating, patient goes through lot of changes and has a very poor quality of life. When dialysis is done, the patient's blood is removed of these toxins and the patient's blood levels of these toxins decreases and then patient can get back to a near normal life. As I mentioned, the two types of dialysis are hemodialysis wherein the patient goes to a hospital three times a week and he gets onto a machine known as the hemodialysis machine. The blood from the patient's body comes into this filter which is attached to the machine and this blood when it is passed through the filter, the impurities come out to the other side and they are drained out and the normal pure blood goes back to the patient's body. The second type of dialysis wherein the patient need not go to the hospital can be done in the house itself. Here the blood does not come outside the body. The fluid which is helping us to absorb the toxins is kept from outside the body into the patient's abdomen. So this is known as abdominal dialysis or peritoneal dialysis. Each one of us are having a peritoneal membrane in the abdomen. So when the dialysate fluid which is given from outside into the abdomen stays in the peritoneal cavity for a couple of hours, it absorbs from the body these toxins namely urea, creatinine, potassium, acid and this is drained out after a couple of hours. Now this type of dialysis which is done at home can be done every day so that patient can continue to do his or her profession without having to worry about going to the hospital three times a week, four to five hours each time. So any patient who has severe renal failure, normally when kidney failure happens, we classify it into two types. One is acute, patient has a sudden drop in the kidney function commonly seen in our country because of diarrhea or certain infections like malaria or certain medications we use like painkillers. Today the patient is fine. Next day because of these reasons the kidney function drops. The other common variety which we see which is very significant and a big burden in our country is chronic kidney disease. Chronic kidney disease is when a patient has normal renal functions this year. Next year has some drop in kidney function second year some more like that every passing year the kidney function keeps on dropping finally reaching a stage where the kidney function is below 10 percent of its normal at that time we call that they are in end stage kidney disease or chronic kidney disease stage 5 these are the people who require dialysis because their remaining kidney function cannot take care of their metabolic needs and the patient has very high levels of toxins in the body leading to very poor quality of life. The early stages of kidney disease CKD stage 1, 2 and 3 and 4 may not have any symptoms and sometimes we pick up the patients only when they have very severe kidney failure. So we, it is mandatory for many of us to get a regular screening done to pick up whether we have kidney disease or not. India is one of those countries which has a major burden of kidney disease. So the list of people who need to be screened once a year is as follows. Every diabetic should get his kidney functions checked up once a year. Every hypertensive should get his kidney functions checked up once a year. Every person who has a patient of kidney disease in his family 
should get a checkup done because many of these kidney diseases are familial and they run in the families. Any person who has need to take multiple painkillers will have a high risk of kidney disease so they need to go for a yearly checkup. Fifth, the patients who have recurrent urinary tract infections or they are using antibiotics for any other reason also need to be screened once a year. Finally, there are patients who will have to undergo certain procedures like stone surgeries. Those who form kidney stones and all that are more prone for kidney disease. P patients who have obesity, very uh, large amounts of fat in the body are also prone for kidney disease. So if these people regularly check, even though there are no symptoms, the test picks up that they have early disease. There is a lot that can be done to prevent these people from progressing from stage 1 to stage 5. But once they are in stage 5, no medic medication works and they need to be on dialysis or transplantation. Dialysis, we already discussed two types, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Transplantation is the best option because both quality and quantity of life improve once the patient has got transplanted. So dialysis once started for end stage continues as long as the patient is alive or the patient has a transplantation. This duration and frequency of dialysis to some extent depends on the severity of renal failure. Most often once they reach the end stage they need around 12 to 15 hours of blood dialysis per week which is done in three sessions of four or five hours when the patient goes to the hospital three times a week. The peritoneal dialysis involves three or four bags of fluid which is sent, is sent into the patient's abdomen and this is done every day till the patient goes for a transplant. So till the patient goes on dialysis there will be certain dietary restrictions because we want the protein intake to be on the lesser side and when we say protein intake we are talking of the animal protein not the vegetarian protein. But once dialysis is started, patient can take almost any food with some restriction in the salt and water intake because between two dialysis patients will not have much urine output and they may put on weight. For that reason we reduce salt and water. But food wise both vegetarian and non-vegetarian they will have no restriction on the dialysis. Other important thing that can happen on dialysis is potassium can increase so there may be some restriction in some patients depending on their blood potassium levels about fruit intake, fruit juices intake, coconut water intake.